Good morning, good morning. Hope everyone is well. Good morning, good morning. Everyone's logging in. Good to see, good to see. Hope everyone is well. Smiling, fighting fit. Going to be underway in a couple of minutes. So uh, we'll, uh, we'll get underway. Hopefully everyone's got a pen and paper and uh, downloaded the, the workbooks. I will we'll put, if you haven't downloaded the workbook, uh, let me put the link into the chat. Go there. Boom, boom, boom. And we're going to get underway in literally one minute because everyone's here nice and on time. Love it. Fantastic. Put this in into the chat. <clears throat> if you haven't already, there's the workbook. Love it, love it, love it. Q, Q, Q. Greetings. <laughs> I love it. Fantastic. All right, good. 30 seconds and we're going to rock and roll. Who we got here? Who we got here? Love it. A oh, few few cameras aren't turned on, but that's all right. I'm sure we'll get to that shortly. We'll see some uh, smiling faces. Good to see Ashley, Zell, Bernadette's still logging in. Labors, we've got uh, four of your, uh, <laughs> three of you guys logged in. Good to see. Um, we're going okay. to rock and roll. Yeah. How are we going? Oh, yeah. Ollie? We'll put them on mute so uh, we don't have any. Yeah, you know to connect my headset to this one. Yeah, I'll try. We'll just put you guys on mute so we can get Thanks, underway. Man. Got me. Fantastic. <clears throat> so, seeing that some of the uh, cameras are off, what I'd love for you to do is to adjust to put in the chat for me. I'm here. Uh, so that you can hear me, just type in the chat, I'm here, that, so I know that uh, Mr. Farkas, legend, uh, just type in the chat that I'm here, so I know we've got food happening, look at you go, love it, type in the chat, I'm here, we're going to get underway, here we go, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Woohoo! Rock and roll. So there might be a, uh, a a few more jumping on. We did have I think, 23 people register. So uh, obviously we'll, we'll, as they come along, we'll keep on going, but we're going to get underway. We are going to get underway. Let's rock and roll. Here we go. Fantastic. This... Beautiful. Give me a thumbs up if you can see that on your screen. Give me a thumbs up. Yep. Fantastic. All right. Cool. Welcome. Review, renew, reignite uh, with the funny for 2023, 2024. We're about to, we've launched in to the next financial year. So I'm excited for the next, uh, for the next hour and three quarters. We're going to get through a bunch of this. Uh, I know you guys are all top performers, high performers. This is usually a day workshop and we're compacting it into two hours <clears throat> or just under two hours. So fasten your seatbelts, keep your arms and legs in at all times. Um, if you do have any questions, just throw them in the chat or unmute yourself um, and we'll unpack that as we go through, okay? So just show me that you got pen and paper ready to go. Show me your pen, show me your pen. Love it. All right, fantastic. Let's rock and roll. So start off with some of you, most of you, I know who you are, some of the I don't know. Uh, you guys, but who am I? So, aka Shorty, James, uh, whatever you'd like to call me. Some people call me Yoda. Um, got a good set of ears. I also crack out the whip a couple of times. Um, but what my role is to help you today is to really have that plan. Really look at what's, you know, that 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 could be you looking at, oh my gosh, what is that, you know, what's happening over the next uh, 12 months? And how do we unpack that? So you've actually got that that clarity and that focus. Um, sometimes we need to bring out the tissues because we have uh, some what I call a, a 
come to Jesus meeting where we where we go a little bit deep and a little bit personal. Um, but sometimes we also have uh, the, the ability to to laugh and be happy, um, just so we can really really kick some amazing goals for yourself um, and also for for your team as well. Okay, so quick snapshot. Um, usually we get in in the day workshop. We'll go through and, and find out who who's who in the zoo. But because we've got limited time here today, we're just going to rip in and get underway. All right. So there's a couple of outcomes that we want to want to go through today. So there's three key outcomes that I want for you guys today. Firstly, is what I want for you guys is to really have um, that. We've got guys jumping in. We I want you to have that 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 clarity of really understanding where that what. What do we need to do over the next 12 months uh, and what needs to happen over the next 90 days? That will help you to really build that focus because what can happen, we can tend to, I guess, chase those shiny balls. We can go down those rabbit holes and we're looking at the next quick best thing that we're, oh, let's try this strategy or let's try that strategy where history shows us. And this is where the importance of review can really dictate of how we move forward. So we want that clarity. We want that focus. And with those things, we'll help to build our momentum, okay? So for me, over the next, uh, this little time we're going to spend together, I want those three things for you to really have that clarity, that focus and momentum. But what I want for you to do now is just to write down what would be your three key things that you want to take away from today? What would be your three top things, your three outcomes that you want to achieve from today? I'll give you 30 seconds to, to, to throw that down. <laughs> All right, cool. What I would like for you to do, once you've done three, I just want you to type in at least one into the chat. So I know that uh, we're getting some love back. So let's go type, what would be your top one that you want to walk away with from today? What would be it? What would be your, your, your number one thing? If you could go, oh, I could just get nail that for today. That would be also awesome. Resetting, love it. Restart. Fantastic. Oh, I love the play on R words today. Focus. Thank you, Mitch. Let's go. What are, what's what's the biggest thing that you want to get away from today? Ooh, goal clarity. Thank you, Darren. Bernadette, love it. Goals, Ashley, setting better processes. Fantastic. Peter, weekly daily habits. Woo, love it. <clears throat> All right. And let's go. Fantastic. Here we go. All right, cool. So now that you've got some clarity around your, your um, thank you, Zell, time management. Consistency, fantastic. Now we've got some focus around what you want to achieve as well. In order to do that, high-performing teams like you guys need rules and boundaries. Yes, I know. Because left with no rules on boundaries, uh, it's like herding cats, okay? Which is a good thing, right? The energy, the passion, the drive. But in order to really have an understanding of what is how do we create excellence and how do we create a huge result? We need boundaries. We need rules. Otherwise, you know, technical words going to be a shit show. Um, and so what we need to do is some of the rules that we're going to be set. I'm going to be setting some, some rules today is the first one is. Hey, play above the line. Now for those who've worked with me in the past and currently um, what we do in order to play above the line, what we do is we take accountability. We take ownership. Um, and uh, responsibility. 
almost forgot that one. We take accountability, ownership, and responsibility for our lessons, for our outcomes. Okay, so that's the first one, play above the line. Um, the next one is play all out. <clears throat> and what I mean by that is the ability to to share, to contribute, to really, even for yourself, play all out. Don't put, don't not let things to go on that piece of paper. Just get it all out of your head. We'll create the plan. We'll create the strategy, but play all out. Don't leave anything. Oh, second guessing. Just get it out there. And the third one is play for each other. Now, yes, totally get it. Some don't know each other, which is totally fine. But if there's any questions that come up, have the ability to go, hey, what about this for a strategy? What about that for a strategy? The ability to, to do that will really help you shine, but also help what I call the tribe shine as well. And as you can see, there are there's three key rules. So what I like for you to do, if, uh, <clears throat> how many of you are prepared to play by these rules for today? Hands up, show of hands. Cool, wonderful. So what you've noticed is that there are three of the rules that have play in it. Interesting. Why do you think that's important? Why do you think having play is important when it comes to strategic yeah, planning? Okay. Why do you think that's important? The ability for that is important is that when we have that play like is the ability to actually be more creative, the ability to actually have some fun with it, and the ability to actually have that growth mindset. Because when it's so much in your head, when it's so much uh, stuck, what happens is that the, the creative juices don't don't flow, the questions don't flow, the what ifs, the how can I, the possibilities, they get stuck when we get into this fixed mindset and we're not creative. When we're not having fun, when we're not happy, ask. So I want to that play like mentality, particularly when it comes to that planning. Because sometimes we get so stuck in our head, it's like oh. You know, I've got to get this detail done. I've got to work. No, no, just just go with that flow. Just go with that that process. Okay. So I want to find out what's been just by going through. I guess some of the some, your outcomes, uh, the rules. What have you? What are you learning around your own habits at the moment in relations to planning strategy? and actually having that reset. I want to find out, throw that in the chat, what's been sort of that lesson for you just in these short 10 minutes around what, what some of the insights around rules, around focus, what is it for you? Yeah, I love it. Having non-negotiables, fantastic, Peter. Love it. What else? Throw that into the chat, unmute yourself. What is it for you around, mm, that's an interesting point of view. That's for you, Benny. <clears throat> Needs to be enjoyable. Yeah, totally. What else? What else? I'm going to actually ask Darren, I'm just going to unmute yourself for a sec, buddy. Let's uh let's unpack that. What does that mean to you needs to be enjoyable? Uh, well, I think if you're going to remain consistent, you've got to have a, you know, that level of enjoyment there as well if it's becoming a task and it's becoming a bit of a pain in the neck, you know, you're not going to, you're not going to focus on it as much as what you possibly could. Yeah. Love it. Love it. Well said, mate. Thank you. Thank you. So let's, uh, let's keep the ship moving. Interesting statistic right here. 90% of yesterday's beliefs, behaviors, and actions will be repeated today. Hmm. Interesting. So what you did yesterday, you'll go 95% of it. You're going to be repeated today. Interesting. Okay. And that 95% is going to then be repeated tomorrow. Hmm. So unless we review that, unless we have a look in the review mirror and go, okay, well, what did I do yesterday? What were my actions? What were my beliefs? What were my behaviors? Did they help and support me or did they actually hinder me? Did that, that little voice creep in and go, oh, I should have got to the gym this morning, but didn't go because I slept in or should have made that extra phone calls or should have had that extra meeting. But you know what? That little voice goes, oh, you'll be okay. Just just chill. Just be, you'll be fine. Just relax. 
right? And so what are these beliefs and behaviors? How do we actually review? How do we actually make sense of what's going on up here that helps us with your focus, with your clarity and, and with your momentum? And when we can actually unpack this and we can actually review it, then we can actually look at what are some of the some of the positive, some of the strengths that we can really harness within ourselves. It could be that the ability to communicate. It could be the ability to take action. It could be the ability to negotiate. It could be the ability to, to have that planning mindset or that, that growth mindset. Fantastic. How do we harness it? How do we increase the one percenters to that? And then on the flip side is those, those negative behaviors, those negative thoughts or feelings. How do we unpack that? How do we start to change those behaviors internally so we can decrease that noise and increase that noise? And so the ability to, of obviously, why we review is the ability to look at what's working, what's not working, um, and what needs to be done differently. And, you know, we've all heard the the saying, <clears throat> activity done time and time again, expecting, you know, there's two things. Goal, I'll unpack this for a minute. Goal achievement isn't rocket science. Goal achievement is positive activity compounded over time. I'll repeat that. Positive activity compounded over time. However, if you had negative activity compounding over time, what does that mean? So if you look at here as the results, what happens is that positive activity compounding over time, it goes like that, right? Negative activity compounding over time goes like that, right? And so the ability to look at what's going to be the difference until you know and put that stake in the ground and go, you know what? I need to review because I need to know what's working and what's not working. And then what do I need to be doing differently? And then coming back to those rules is like, I needed to take accountability, responsibility, and ownership over my actions, behaviors, and beliefs to do things a little bit differently. So this is the, the so important of, of why we review. And what is reviewing is that actually identifying identifying what the wins were. I always love to start any conversation is, well, what are you proud of? What, are, what have been some of the wins that you've had over the last week, last month, last quarter, right? What that does, it shifts your energy. So if you're in a, ever in a team meeting, great way. What's been your wins for the week? That shifts your energy, makes you proud, makes you come from that winner's mindset. We also need to identify what been some of those challenges. What have been some of those setbacks? Okay. We also need to look at um, what are some of the, the lessons that we've learned over that past 12 months, three months, one month. And the lessons break into to two categories. There's obviously the positive lessons. So what, you know, why was it a, a positive lesson? All right. And then the other aspect is what were the negative lessons that you can actually learn from this? Because looking at this key thing, the lessons that's the biggest component in relations to enabling you to learn and grow and have that reset. So this is what we're going to do in a minute is to actually have the importance of reviewing and to really unpack those, those lessons. And I'll give you a really good example of that. <clears throat> Some of you may know this story. <clears throat> um, blue sky time, right? Blue sky time is a really important time. It could be weekly or fortnightly to take time out for yourself, to look at all your goals, what are you working on, take the phone off, the email off, and just a reset of what is important to you and look at all different areas of life. You know, we've talked about in the in past workshops, the, the wheel of life, looking at all the different areas, giving yourself a score out of 10 of what those areas and how those areas are performing and what you need to do to, to increase it by, by half a point or one a point. But, but this blue sky timing allows you to actually look above as a helicopter view on your life and go, hmm, where am I going? How am I traveling? 
because so often, and I know pretty much all of you personally, so often we get in the trenches and just do, 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 do. And this is where I come into place. I get you by the back of the neck and I'll pull you up out of the trenches and go, where are the goalposts? What are we working towards? Because sometimes if we live in the trenches, we could be just doing circles because we're going round and round and round and actually not knowing that we're going around and around because you're in the trenches because you don't know where those goalposts are. So having this blue top, blue sky time each week or each fortnight is so important. 30 minutes to 60 minutes just to stop, reevaluate. Beautiful place where you might want to have a nice cup of coffee. Could be in nature, could be at a cafe, but no phone, no distractions where you can actually have this time out. Okay. So as a show of hands, how many of you do blue sky time? Okay, cool. How many of you would like to do blue sky time? Yeah, cool. And how many of you are going to be committed to blue sky time? Yeah, sweet. All right, cool. So let's let's start this process in and look at our review process and what we're actually going to, to be reviewing today. So <clears throat> you've, all got, you've all got this sheet, bless you. Uh, you've all got this sheet and I'm going to just go through what this actually means. So in the first column, we've I've obviously got the, the dollar signs. And what this means is there's going to be broken into to three key areas. Firstly, there's obviously sales, which is, you know, if you're working with, I want to get X amount of sales over this, this 12 months or what was that? Okay. So that's, that's actually a specific number. It could be, I want 50 sales or I want hundred sales or whatever it is for you. I want 30 sales. I want 10 sales, whatever that sales is for you. Income is obviously the revenue that you've generated for you, for yourself. Um, it could be commission, it could be uh, business, whatever it is, but then also profit. And some may not know what that specifically is, but what is that net profit for you that you've, based on all your expenses, this is the, that take home of my business unit that I've, I've achieved for the 12 months. So that's the first column. The next column is all about people. So some may have a team, some may be working to develop a team, some may have already have a team for quite, for quite a while. But there's three key areas when it comes to, to team. Firstly is about finding them, all right? I'm a big believer, and we've got Pete here, specialist in, in recruitment. I'm a big believer around always be recruiting, always finding out who's out there, who's in the market. You don't necessarily have to hire them, but it's always about who's out there because you never know what, what can potentially happen. You could have a big growth spurt and you go, cool, we need someone. And you've built a relationship over there. Having a, a list of team members, a potential team members is so important because you just don't know what the future holds. You could grow, people can go, life happens, but the ability to always be on the lookout is so important. So that's the first part is finding uh, potential team members. And then the ability to, to, to train them. How's your training process? How's the training um, parameters have been for your, for your business unit? And then you're retaining. What do you do to continually retain your team if you've got a team at the moment? What do you do? How do you support them? Um, how do you have that, that uh, career advancement? What do you do? Okay. The next one is all around processes and systems First one is, is your processes. Do you have, you know, your, your checklists and systems that you follow through? How's your operations? Are you actually, um, you got your manuals in place? You know, this is the, what I call the non-sexy stuff of business. Um, you got your policies and procedures in, in place. And then your performance. Are you working to, towards KPIs for yourself personally and for your team? Is, is that on track? Okay, so that's the third area. The fourth area is about you. And this is that, that person in the mirror, all right? This is about you and your leadership, uh, your self-leadership. Are you leading yourself first? Are you leading the team if you have a team? <clears throat> How, are you looking around? Are you looking after yourself with your self-care, your health, your, your physical, your emotional, your spiritual health? And do you have, have personal goals? What are those uh, goals outside of your business unit that you're working on, be it health, be it family, be it relationships, be it finances? What is it for you that you're actually doing outside of, of running your business? Okay. 
So I wanted to go through this initially because we're going to go through the review process. I'm going to share how we're actually going to do this re review process. <clears throat> so there are five, and once again, if you've got any questions, throw them in the chat, unmute yourself, uh, because we're going to put, about to put pen to paper in a minute. So there are five things that we're going to do in relations to the sheet here, okay? <clears throat> the first one, we're going to rate each uh, section, each box. So there's 12 boxes out of 10, okay? Um, each box. And that rating is... One, it's just not happening. And 10, you're just mastering it. You're killing it, okay? And so, yes, I do have left-handed chicken scroll. So I'll, I'll say that straight up. Um, so if you can't understand what my writing uh, says, just please let me know and I'll uh, debrief it for you. Um, so one is not happening, 10 is mastery. And this is what over the last 12 months. So we're reviewing the last financial year and how you've gone in each of those of those areas okay then a quick explanation of well, why did you score that so what why did you give it a one one okay because i wasn't even focusing it cool right there's no judgment here it's just this is a snapshot of what's working what's not working 10 is i'm measuring it daily i'm on track i've got everything in place blah 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 so we want a brief description of why all right then we want okay so what was some of the maybe one or two wins in that box, if you don't have any wins, move on. What are maybe one or two challenges in that box? If you don't, move on. And what were some of the key lessons that you've taken away from each individual box, right? So once again, we're going to spend, you know, say seven to 10 minutes in this. I don't want you to think too hard. I just want you to get what's on top of the head down onto a piece of paper. So you've got that clarity and that aha moment, because from this exercise, you'll get further insights so we can take this information and do the renew of what that next 12, uh, 12 months need to look at. So five steps. I'll give you seven to 10 minutes. Um, let's go through and let's do it for each of those different blocks now. Ready, set, let's go. If you got any questions, just yell out. Let's go. Yeah, g'day, James Ash, mate. How are you going? Good, yourself? Good, good, mate. And, and this is over a twelve-month period. I take it we're looking back for the for the whole twelve months. Correct. My, Last financial year. Yep. My six months and six months are vastly different. Um, That's okay. Break so it into two six months. If I'm yeah, okay, cool. Yep, easy.
five minutes to go. Three minutes to go. I'm going to share as we start to to finish up this review process. So share a little story. Um, I was watching a a documentary a little while ago, and uh, this guy was the was the trainer. It was a podcast I actually listened to. He was the trainer for uh, for Michael Jordan, and uh, <clears throat> back when he was training Michael Jordan. 
that actually watched film and uh, they took video of each game. And back then they didn't have any um, ad, uh, apparatuses that could track you know, how many shots were made, how much time was spent on the court, how many, how, how far they used to run. And so at the end of each game, this trainer actually watched the whole game again and actually counted Michael Jordan's steps manually. He counted how many shots he took off his left hand, how many shots he took off his right hand. And based on all the information that was gathered, he would then assign what training program he would be doing the next day to get back into the gym. And I think there's a really important piece around reviewing is how often are we reviewing our craft? You know, as you know, basketball family, and whenever we watch tape with the the team, my daughter's team that I coach, it's interesting what the girls think they're doing <laughs> and then what's actually really doing, it's usually poles apart. I thought I did that move. I thought I made that pass. I thought I did. I thought, I thought, I thought. But when you can actually watch yourself back and actually do it or not do it, this is where the review process is so important because you actually get physical results. I'm always a big believer when someone's got problems with, you know, connections or conversions, it's like record your conversation, listen back to the words, the tonality, the energy that you have on the phone, because that will give you a live demonstration of what's working and what's not working. And so what we're going to do in a minute is that I'm actually going to push you in different groups and I'm just going to quick three minutes in that group. And I just want to, what have you learned from actually reviewing your own process over the last 12 months? I just want you to just have, introduce yourself and just go, here are my lessons. This is what I've learned about these 12 different boxes in a general aspect over the last 12 months. The good, positive lessons and the and, and the negative lessons as well. So I'll put you in, into groups in a second. Um, at the end, uh, there'll be a 60 second countdown. No need to do anything. Continue the talking because at the end of the 60 seconds, everyone will will come back. All right. So introduce yourself. And uh, let's go through your lessons, positive and also negative. Ready? Let's go. Click on the link, join the group, rock and roll.
All right. Welcome back, everyone. We'll be back in in about 18 seconds. Bernadette, I'll get you to unmute yourself. Biggest lessons for you. Um, yes, as Ellen and I were just having a chat, um, focusing on the, because I've only been here in this area <laughs> for, for a short time, so I haven't been doing the 12 months, but just focusing where I've probably gone wrong in the last um, so three months is probably focusing too much on the short-term goals rather than the, long, the end game. Um, so now I'm just trying to put my processes back in place um, and sticking to those. And, and looking at that long-term rather than, yeah, short-term gain. Yeah, fantastic. Great, great feedback. Uh, Benny, lessons? Um, uh, <laughs> shut up, Darren. Uh, lessons, mate, I think I just said to the boys, the biggest lessons are um, your analogy probably summed it up really well. Uh, and the stuff that we've been through personally, but the ability not to attach or the attachment around winning and losing, but looking at everything as just information and knowledge and the ability to separate yourself from that and make informed decisions or the best possible decisions around the next step forward. And clarity isn't necessarily knowing the whole story, but just the next step um, and then the ability to look at it objectively. So that's been... Yeah, that's been huge. Love it. Love it. Fantastic. And last one, Peter. Put me on the spotlight shortly. I like that. Of course. <laughs> um, I think let, I sort of focus on the scaling. I guess when you scale, things seem to fall off. You know, when it comes to you're trying to bring people in and then because we are a small business, you're sort of focusing on, I guess, more the training and building someone up and building a team up, then things start to fall off, you know, when it comes to your sales, when it comes to your operationals, when it comes to, I think, everything else, you know, because you're sort of focused and belt in. I guess that's the challenge there, I guess, in terms of scaling. Um, the challenge in that is sales dip, you know, with, I guess, the growth. Uh, but then obviously you, you train well that that will come as well over due time, but it's actually managing that period and that time when it comes to, I guess, the stress, the blue sky thinking and um, going back to the fundamentals and making sure you're staying on track. So the lessons out of that is, is making sure that we're improving our systems when it comes to training. Yep. Um, so that. that way we're not so hell bent on that day in, day out, um, where that's you know a, a good structure in place moving yep. forward. Yep. Love it. Awesome, mate. Thank you. Much appreciated. Excellent. All right. So now that we've gone, looked in the past in the review mirror, now actually we start to, to look forward and to look at, okay, what does the next 12 months need to look like and what do we want to create over the next next 12 months? Um, the reason why, what do you think the main reason why people don't set goals are? What do you think, what do you, what do you think it is? Let's go throw, throw some ideas into the chat chat what do you think most or unmute yourself and and throw it out there what do you think most people of, don't set goals the fear of losing yeah definitely zell fear of losing yep what else what i think a lot of people just don't why? know about doing it <laughs> <That's> yeah <true. laughs> yep fantastic and what else I think more. the goals are too big. They don't know how to, there's a scarcity of, of the goals being too back, big and not knowing how to break that down into a, like a monthly or, uh, you know, weekly, I guess, attainable target to then sort of reach that milestone. Yeah, thousand percent, thousand percent. And so, you know, we've got not sure what their goals are um, and also, yeah, scared of not, not hitting them. Totally, Pete, love it. So looking at, there's also the aspects of, there's a, there's a, can be a lot a lot of fear around goals, fear around goal setting, uh, fear around uh, failing, fear of actually around success, um, and also the fear of being accountable, uh, because people are creatures of comfort. If you look at the last 10, 20 years, particularly in business, life has made us more comfortable. There's really we had we've had different struggles, but you can pick up your phone from your couch and order food. 
you can order products online. You can order the remote and you can change TV. So you don't have to physically move and physically go anywhere if you don't want to. Look at us now, you know, 10 years ago, it, it, it would be all live at all face to face. People are dialing in all over Australia now to actually jumping on, on this right now. So we've become creatures of comfort. So when we, when we sometimes when we're held accountable to certain activities, we need to, to push through certain barriers. We have that. Sometimes we have that ceiling go, Oh, oh. but if we know, if we just go through that, there's so much light. There's so much, uh, goodness on the other side it's just that ability to, to see the cracks and actually to go through it <clears throat> we set goals because there, there's there's three main reasons we set goals um to obviously to have some focus we set goals to to have some some clarity of where we're going and and why we're going there all right and we set goals to actually help us to build momentum because what happens is that as you can start to, you know, as Peter said, it's about breaking them down. As we start to get success, as we start to tick off those goals, that builds momentum. You know, if you if you are trained, if you're training, for example, in the gym, it's about, as I said, positive consistent consistency over time. If you're making prospecting calls, it's about positive activity compounding over time. So that's the momentum. And sometimes that momentum might feel a little bit ups and downs and lefts and rights. But once we start to get those wins, we start to shift in our own energy and we start to feel more lighter, more positive. And that just builds and that just gets projected out in, into the people that we're talking about. <clears throat> so what we're going to do now is to, to look at how many goals do we actually set. So what we're going to do is in each of the boxes, once again, I want you to think about this. I want you to have a, a a maximum of three goals per box. Now, I just want you to, these goals are your goals. It's not the person's next to you or my goals. These are your goals. And when we're looking at these goals, once again, I want them to be really specific. So if we've got income as one of the boxes, and if you write more income, well, I'll give you a dollar. There's more income what specifically do you want that dollar to be? All right. How much does that income look like? What does that profit? Is it a percentage or is it a, is it a, a dollar figure? How many more? So is it, you know, I'm going to be saying my data could be neurons over the next, next 12 months. Um, I'm going to be I'm going to be training at least one person over this next 12 months. Whatever it is be specific. Um processes it might be I'm going to over the next 12 months I'm going to some process you know the 10 checklists that I might need to I'm going to really hone in on operations and I'm going to ensure that all those systems are in place. Um and then the performance I'm going to ensure that the team and myself have got KPIs and we're following those KPIs, okay? So when we set in these goals, we have a maximum of, of three. You can just have one, but a maximum of three in each different area. Okay. Now, I don't want to spend too long on here. This is just a brain dump of getting all the stuff out of your head down onto the sheet. And we're going to spend about five minutes just to brain dump all these goals getting out of your head. If there's any questions, let me know. Otherwise, ready? Let's go.
side note why you're why you're doing this if you don't have any goals in a box that is okay too don't be concerned totally fine One more minute, <clears throat> share a little story while, uh, while we're on the final stages. I was going through this process with, uh, with a client the other day, flew out to, uh, to Europe yesterday. So he couldn't be here today. Hard life. Business is going well, obviously. Um, and we're going through the, the team thing and, uh, <clears throat> he did a big, uh, he's in gardening and landscape and he did a, a really big, big drive to um, start the recruitment process because obviously it's quiet in winter, but it takes a little while to obviously find and train team up to re ready for spring. So great, great drive. Got 12 really good applicants that come through. Obviously there was a bunch of other non very good ones and, but found, found one that just really ticked all the boxes and, and uh, hired them straight away. But because we developed a nurturing program for the other 11, what happened was that two of his other staff members had to go back overseas. And because he was developed a relationship with the other 11, uh, uh, mentioned that to them, and then they fitted in straight away. Compared what happens, usually a lot of time we get, you know, we get a, a newbie onto the team, but not nurturing other possibilities down the track where they can, can start to build that relationship. And if things happen like life does, the ability you've built that relationship and now, Hey, listen, there's an opportunity has come up. Would you like to, to join the team? So there's just, just a, a classic story of <clears throat> that fine train and retain where you can really nurture like you do with clients, like you do with prospective clients, um, or potential team members. Cool. All right. So now that we've done that, what I'd like for you to do is to this next process is in each different box, you, you might have one, two or three different goals. I just want you to asterisk the number one goal in each box. The number one goal in each box. I just want you to asterisk. Now it could be a challenge, but that's okay. Work with me for a minute. Just go through and just asterisk the number one goal in each box. And when you've done that, I want you to write in the chat, done, please. <clears throat>
Okay, so I'll give you another minute. I've just marked each box from one to 12. This is for this next process we're gonna go through. So now that we've, cool, we'll just wait for a couple more to type in done. When you're done, type in done. Beautiful. So we have up to 12 goals now that are high priority. Cool. So what's going to be high priority? What's going to be low priority? So this next little exercise, cool little exercise when we need to identify what's going to be the top goals in our focus that we need to focus on. Because usually there's a great book, which I may have mentioned before, called The One Thing. <clears throat> and usually there's one goal that really either makes the other goals either unnecessary or it actually is part of that one goal. And so what we're going to do, as you can see, I've, I've marked them from one to 12. And, and what we've done is here's a, them down the, the side of the page. Okay. So, um, you know, for example, this is the number one asterisk sales goals. This is the income goal. This is the profit goal. Okay. So you, you've got them from box to box. What I'm going to ask you to do now, if you if you need to do this, great. If you don't, great too. But we want to go, what's the most to least priority in relations to your goals? So what we're going to do now is we're going to go, okay, <clears throat> we're going to compare. So what's more important for you right now for this next 12 months? Is it, we're going to compare, is it one or two? Well, you know what? Sales is more because I know if I focus on my sales, then income will generate okay cool we're going to now compare to one to three well profits more important okay now one to four uh one to five one to six oh that one that's more important one to seven one to eight so we're just comparing one at a time to each other cool okay so that's the first process then we go all right cool now let's compare income to profit. What's more important, income or profit? Profit. What's more important, income? What's more important, income? Two to five, two to six, six, two to seven, two, two to eight, two, two to nine, two, two to ten, ten, two to eleven. <clears throat> okay. So what you can do. And what you go through, then three to four, do the same thing, four to five, do the same thing, and so forth and so forth. <clears throat> so you can do it now. It literally takes two minutes. It, it might look a lot, of, a lot of squiggly lines, but the end result will have a bunch of ticks and whatever's obviously got the most ticks is most important. Whatever's got the least ticks is least important. <clears throat> so you can do this after this session or you can literally, it'll take two minutes now just to do one-to-one. -one. Cause what happens is that when we get a list of one to 12 and we go, what's most, what's most important. It's like, ah, uh, right. Deer in a headlight. But if we go, if we just compare one to two, well, what's more important? Is it one or is it two? Okay, cool. So then if we can duplicate that process, one to three, one to four, one to five and so forth and so forth, what it actually does, it gives us a lot more clarity of like, okay, based on this, these are most, most to least important prioritize goals okay so going through that process i want to find out what's been the biggest awareness around where your focus needs to be over these next 12 months what's uh let's say i want you to unmute yourself what's been what's the the biggest priority what's the biggest focus for you over these next 12 months who would like to share before i start naming people sales sales okay good so that's the number one that's the most uh, important for you at the moment, Pete. Mm -hmm. For sure, yeah. Love it. Big Fantastic. Okay, good. Zell, you've unmuted. Oh, unmute. Just go again, unmute. I think for me, prospecting at the moment. Nice. Okay, good. Fantastic. Uh, let's go one more. You know, Jerry. Go, Ashley. 
Yeah, to, like, and for me, it's it's split. Uh, obviously, one is to, is to build the office and and, and you know so, sort of cement our position as a as the number one brand in town, and then two is also get back and 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 do better for myself as far as my sales numbers are concerned. Great. All right. Fantastic. Excellent. So now that we've got the twelve month focus of of where we need to be looking at as a high level. Once again, this is a, the ability to look at this as a snapshot and go, right, that's that's my 12-month focus. What we wanted to do is to start to reignite the next night. Because when we look at the next day, what we need to look at is coming back to these three key words, which is focus, clarity, and momentum. When we get these three words really down packed, it gets us laser focus, super clear, and the results and the actions just start. Once again, positive compounding activity equals goal achievement. Okay. So for the next 90 days, we're going to create this one page roadmap, which you can print out, share, enroll, um, have it as that guiding light of like, this is where I need to get to. I'm not going to be chasing these rabbit down these rabbit holes. I'm not going to be chasing these shiny balls. This is where I need to, to, to be. And this is why I need to have this focus. So we need to reignite these next 90 days so we can maintain uh, that momentum. So this looks a lot, but we're going to break this down into bite-sized pieces. Okay. So what we're going to do is going to identify what are your top three goals that we want to be working on for the next 90 days. And based on those goals, what are the, the, the top three projects that we need to be working on? So a goal might be, okay, cool. I want to increase sales by X. And one of the projects to help me that would be to create a social media um, strategy. Okay. So that could be a project. A social media strategy could be a project or a marketing campaign could be a project or I want to find a one new team member over these next 90 days. Okay, great. Well, one of the projects would be I need to really uh, map out my find strategy. So I've got multiple fires and multiple stokes in the fire to attract the right type of person to the team. Then we look at, okay, what's going to be the monthly milestones based on my goals and projects? How do I know I'm going to be winning? What are the key, key indicators for me over these next one, two, and three months that's going to allow me to go, you know what? I'm on track. What what were those key milestones each month? Then we're going to look at what are the key behaviors. So it's all well and good. You know, I love this because it's all well and good to create a plan, but sometimes we they stay on the computer or they get printed and we put them in the bottom drawer and we're not stepping into the behaviors that we need to step in. Well, I've talked so many about wearing the different hats about who do you need to be when you're on the phone? Who do you need to be when you're presenting? Who do you need to be when you're at home? Excuse me. Who do you need to be when you're at the gym? So it's about what behaviors do you need to do to ensure that this plan comes to life and gets actioned. And the last one is what are the habits? What positive habits do I need to do? Because remember, as we said in the past, 95% of yesterday's habits, behaviors, and beliefs are going to be repeated today. So what are those positive habits that we need to be repeating to help us to, to keep on scaling? So we're going to break this down. So let's have a look at these different areas now. So if we look at <clears throat> what are your top three goals that you want to achieve for the next 90 days? I would love for you to write down that down. And based on based on this sheet, if you were to break down, these are the 12 months goals. But if you go, okay, I want 50 sales over the year. Well, for the next three months, I want like 15 sales, whatever that might look like for you. What What is for you the next 90 days? What are the top three goals for these 90 days for you? Remember, they've got to be specific. 
We've got to they got to be measurable. Once you've done your three, what I'd love for you to do is just to throw into the chat what are the top, what are the areas of focus for the next 90 days? So if you go, <clears throat> so if you got one might be X number of number of sales. So that's sales area. One might be uh team, one might be um uh, process or KPIs. What are the different boxes? I don't need to know the detail, right? But just what are the areas? I just want you to throw the different areas, the headings of the boxes <clears throat> as a goals that you're focusing on for the next 90 days. Throw that into the chat. I'm just interested to find out. Love it. Thank you. Sales, personal development and exposure. Fantastic. Sales, self-care, and process. Fantastic. Thank you, Mitch. BD, sales, and team. Thank you, Peter. Sales, business performance, and personal... I'll say that's work plan, not walk plan, but yeah, time to get it, Ashley. Thank you. <laughs> Good man. Better that sales process and self-care. Sorry, Shorty. I'm having a few connection dramas here. I can't chat and I can't actually show my screen. So yeah, sorry, All mate. Good. I'm as, long as, you're, as long as you're listening and, and you're totally fine. All right, fantastic. So now that we've got the top three goals, what we need to do are certain projects that are associated to that. What I've realized over the, what are we now? Gosh, show my age, 15 years of doing this process is, uh, thank you, Benny, income, leadership, and performance, is a lot of the times we... We, try to, we overcommit what we we're going to do in three months but undercommit what we can do in 12 months or two years. And so we we have still what's called business as usual activity. Tyrone, fantastic. Personal goals, sales, and leadership. We have our business as usual stuff, which is the day-to-day -day in the trench work of <clears throat> making calls, um, managing the team, running the business. But at the same time, we need to look at what are the key projects that are going to help us to achieve some of these goals. And as I mentioned previously, it's not trying to take on too many projects that none of them get done. But what would be what would be three key projects to focus on for these 90 days? You know, as I said, it could be a social media strategy, it could be a marketing plan, it could be a personal development plan whatever, like once again, it's the ability to go, if I was to nail these three projects, it would uplift those goals. Once again, it will uplift. And it's not necessarily consistent activity. It could be a project where it's like a due date. So for example, it could be a revamp of my flyers or could be a revamp of my training for my team, whatever that is, what are those three projects that you go, Ooh, if I can just nail those in the next three months, mwah, be amazing. Don't complicate it. Just this is where sometimes we can get stuck. We're trying to find out all the ins and outs and all the details. Don't complicate it. Just keep it high level.
All right. I would love to find out what are some of those projects. I want you to just choose one project, throw it in the chat so we can just, uh, just have a look at where, what type of projects that we're going to be focusing on for these next 90 days. <clears throat> Let's go throw a project into the chat so I know where where your focus is, at least one of the, the different projects. Oh, drop the mic. Here we go. Employing my daily plan to show leadership to the team. Ashley, woo, boom, Benny, meditation. You go, bro. Peter, BD, creating new client list and market map and create new capability statement. Fantastic. Tyrone, marketing campaign to promote commercial buyers agency to baby boomers. Love it. Help each team member develop a personal goal plan aligned with business leadership. This is exciting. I'm excited for you guys. Here we go. Let's go. A couple more. And we'll continue on. Let's throw it in there. What do we got? So now that we've got our three key projects, what we want to now to look at are what are going to be the milestones each month that we know that we're winning. What are the key milestones that we know that, and this could be related to your goal. This could be, you know, if you want to achieve 12 sales over the next uh, three months, then okay, I need to be hitting four, obviously four sales a month. If Obviously, sometimes it goes like this, up and down, but the ability to actually just go, all right, I know that I'm winning when I'm actually achieving those four months, uh, four sales a month. Or, okay, I know that I'm winning where I'm actually meditating 30 times in the month, once each day. I know that I'm winning when um, my project plan is, is actually ticking those activities off each and every day, each and every month. So what are the key milestones? It could be, so for example, it could be if one of your, even a projects could be coming back to a social media strategy or campaign. It could be month one, I know that I'm winning where I've combined all my content for the month. Okay, great. Month two would be, okay, when my uh, Facebook ads are running and we're reviewing and we're tweaking, great. Month three would be, you know, once again, my other, another two Facebook ads are, are implemented and they're on track as an example, right? There could be so many different examples around your milestones, but what are the milestones for you <clears throat> that you know that you are succeeding towards your projects and towards your goals? What would be the key milestones each month? Good to see your smiling face back, as. <laughs> All right. Now that we've got some milestones, what would be what would be the milestone that excites you the most that you were, that you are going to achieve? Because I know you're going to do it. What's the milestone that excites you the most? That when you've achieved it, it's like, 
yes, that internal ha. Throw that into the chat. Throw that into the chat. Or unmute and let me know what it is. What's that milestone that just like mm, gets you pumped? Love it. Sales results and new clients. Totally right. You can see it, feel it, taste it, touch it. Achieving personal sales goals three month three. Yes. You know, it's it's they're the things that they're the motivators, right? They're the things that inspire us. They're the things that gets us out of bed in the morning. They're the things that drives us. They're the things that I can see it. Using the all the different emotions to really see yourself signing that contract, see yourself doing that deal, see yourself achieving that milestone that's like whew, let's go let's let's rip in and bring on new clients and hitting sales targets love it fantastic so now that we've got let me know if you need more time now that we've got our key milestones once again these are great things down on paper but without doing anything about it. They're just going to be that great things on paper. What we need to look at is who do I need to be over these next 90 days based around this plan, right? So we're not talking about who do you need to be at home? Who do you need to be with your own personal health? Who do you need to be in the office? This is around about your goals and your projects and your milestones. Who do you need to be in order to achieve this? Okay. Remember, that 95% of our beliefs, behaviors <clears throat> from yesterday are playing out today and they'll play out tomorrow unless we enhance the positive ones and change the neg negative ones. So what are the behaviors? What are some of the things that we need to become or become more of? Because you know we have over 500 different behaviors inside of us. It's about accessing the right behaviors at the right time in the right environment. So... It's no use accessing when we're doing admin work and computer work that outgoing, that confident, that you know, charismatic person when we're doing admin. It's not gonna, you're not gonna do that admin. So it's the ability to actually find out who that needs to be. Focus, consistent, and discipline. Love it. Here we go. Let's go. Let's share some more. Who do you need to be over these next 90 days to really Bring this plan to life, make it happen, implement it, and kick some serious butt. <laughs> hey, Shorty, I was listening to Alex Hormozzi this morning. Oh, hey. Hilarious. Yeah, it's hilarious that you're talking about it because he was talking about um, sometimes it's easier to do an inversion of that. Yeah, nice. So <laughs> the these inversion books. of what that person needs to be. So what? is the person who wouldn't do that? What are those characteristics and just be the opposite? I found that so much easier than trying to figure out who I need to be rather what the opposite of that person would actually do and just not do that. Great reframe, right? Awesome reframe. I love it. It's like, who, who, who are you not going to be? Yeah, so true, right? Love it. Um, I, I held up two great books. If you haven't got them, if you haven't read them, uh, Alex Hamoji freak um hundred million dollar offers hundred million dollar leads um it's yeah some great reading um huge story huge huge story so yeah anyway um thank you benny for sharing uh actually hustler focus on plant and lead fantastic all right what else let's go one more throw it into the chat what are the behaviors who do you need to be or who do you not need to be over these next 90 days Positive focus and take responsibility. Don't know that. Thank you. All right. So now that we've got that, is that what habits do I need to support my success? Interesting. And this is where 
we what habits are going to support us we have habits that can really hinder us um like going out on benders and and you know getting drunk every night and they're not really going to help us to support our goals um that might support having good times but uh, not necessarily support some of the goals that we wanted to achieve. So it could be health habits. <clears throat> it could be personal care habits. It could be habits around um, your management in relation to creating your ideal weeks. It could be habits around um, doing the hard things first, eating that frog. So what are the habits do you need that's going to support your success? Just make just a couple words, each habit. Or I'll get to that in a, in a second. What are the habits? I just want you to brain dump the habits. You don't necessarily have to be doing them all now, but just brain dump, just put them all down onto paper and I'm going to share with you a little strategy. Um, some great habits books, Atomic habit, Habits, um, tiny habits. I was just looking at my bookshelf. Great books around this. And one of the things when we talk about habits, so often, you know, this happens in the new year, right? We we get so excited that we new year, new me, woohoo, and we want to try and do all these habits. But then what happens uh, because we're trying to take on too many that it falls off the wagon. So the best type of habits is to do one at a time. And the, the best way to start a new habit is to identify some of the habits that you want to get rid of, but then also stack a habit onto an existing habit. So what I mean by that is, so for example, if you brush your teeth at night, what's a habit that you can do directly after brushing your teeth? It could be reading for, for five minutes or reading 10 pages or meditating for five minutes or breathing, whatever it is for you, <clears throat> right? So brushing your teeth is usually an ingrained habit or hopefully for most of us. Um, and so how do we stack a habit from that uh, that's going to help us? Once we've created that habit, and that consistency, then we can add another. So try not to do a suggestion would be try not to do too many at once, but just start to get some momentum and, and motive, uh, consistency around it. <laughs> cool. We've got maintain routines and don't cut corners. Ooh, I like it. We've got <clears throat> mindset, consistency, and timeout. I love it. We've got morning, five minute focus, better diet and mindfulness. We've got good sleep, working out, eating whole foods. Yeah, there we go. So these, it's interesting, right? These habits that we're forming or already have formed that we're going to um, increase will actually help our milestones, help our projects and help our, help our goals. Energy, energy, love it. <clears throat> so what we've done, we've actually just gone through this whole process and you can see here that it's like, oh, there's a lot of, a lot of drawings, a lot of boxes. Uh, love it, Tyrone. Daily action, develop my skill each day to be a master. Uh, say incantations. Uh, let me know what that means. Uh, daily. Cool. All right. Fantastic. Um, so now that we've created this, we've gone through each of these different areas, what I'd like for you to do is have this somewhere each and every day because what we've created now is a, a one play one page plan <clears throat> so with this if you haven't already i'd love for you to print it duplicate it uh, share it with your team share it with loved ones um, share it with me right um, and and this will be uh incantations a series of words said out loud oh i love it thank you tyrone um Share this with, with people who you trust and have got your back and support you because what we don't want is to share it with the world and and people people have their viewpoints on it, which is totally fine because that's just their viewpoints. But you want people that have got your back. They want to support you. They want to see you thrive um, and see you achieve these plans. Once again, having as an accountability piece is really important. 
And the last two is implement the bloody thing. Take action around it. It's no use having this great plan. And as I said before, you know, leaving it on your on your D drive or putting it into your bottom drawer and go, yeah, thanks, Shorty. That was a good sesh. And uh, see you later. Because I've got a saying, knowing and not doing is not knowing at all. And so often I see this where it's like, yeah, yeah, I've, I've tried that. Yeah, yeah, I've done that. Yeah, yeah. But when you actually unpack it, I haven't actually implemented it. So please don't be like that. Please take the time to actually put this in place to actually create that, that activity, those habits, those behaviors, those milestones. And before you know it, you've achieved your projects and you've achieved your goals. So submit your plans to me. Love to help you on that journey so I can kick your butt, keep you on track, um, bring the tissues if needed, but also big, big hugs and celebrations at the same time as well. All right. So what I want to find out biggest, uh, biggest lessons, biggest takeaway that you've, taken away from today what's been it for you what's been the aha moments for you what's been the biggest lessons and takeaways let's uh throw them into the chat or actually bring yourself off mute who'd like to go i want at least three to four what's been your biggest lesson takeaway take yourself off mute what is it for you tyrone i'll start with you biggest lesson takeaway This is the interesting part about it is I think just having a plan that's put in place, it's easy to have it in my mind and go, yep, you know, this is what I want to do, but actually breaking it down and seeing the milestones, seeing the behaviors, habits, that has been the biggest takeaway for me today. Awesome, mate. Thank you. Thank you. Lavers, what is it for you? You still on? Still in deals. Still in deals. Uh, Mitch, what is it for you? What's been your biggest takeaway? I think uh, for me, um, it's not really uh, it's not really the sales side of things I've really got to be focusing on. It's my, my self care is is probably the most important, um, and I know that by focusing on that. Um, it will in turn um, have some very positive impacts on on my sales in general anyways. So I think just too many, um, uh, too many, like uh, too many focuses, um, as you say, you know, just sticking to one thing um, and self-care is the biggest thing for me. So yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Benny, what was it for you? Uh, mate, I was just looking at some notes. What I got out of it, I think, is practice makes permanent. So do what you do on purpose with purpose. Um, so putting it all on that page and understanding what it actually means moving forward. Um, yeah, that's that's me. Awesome, mate. Thank you. Actually, what is it for you? Oh, just unmute yourself. Sorry, we got you. Yep. 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 Um, probably what I went went, went through wrote had those notes out. You know, I, I I noticed how much of my focus was on the business rather than me personally, and so uh, a bit of a re uh, a refresh on that and and uh, and get back to me. Um, but but also you know in in that it's showing better leadership within the team as well. So. You know, both both sides of that equation. Yeah. yeah, nice. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Bernadette, for you? Um, for me, I think it's um, you know, breaking it down into sections, having that mindset, that positive thinking and the behavior, what I need to do to get into those sections to the end result. So love it. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Zell, what about yourself? Just unmute yourself. Uh, having it down on paper and uh, seeing uh, and making it a, a challenge so that you can achieve what you've uh, set out to achieve and don't waver from it um, and always try and set higher goals because you set low goals, you don't really achieve anything. You've got to just set your goal just that much higher 
to make you strive that much more. I, I don't believe in low goal settings um, because whatever you come in at, that was your best for that period of time. So, yeah. I think it's good. Thank you. It down on paper. Fantastic. What is it for you? Sorry, mate, you cut out there. I didn't actually know that it was, <laughs> I didn't know you were referring to me, but um, yeah, probably like that blue sky vision, if that's what you, if that's what it was uh, yep. referred to, because I didn't realize that I was actually doing that until you said that that's what it was called. But um, it's kind of like pulling yourself away from the hamster wheel and having a bit of an outsider's look at what you're doing and making sure that, you know, you're on track, even though it feels like you are until you have that look from the outside. It can, uh, can seem, uh, you know, paint a very different picture. Yeah, fantastic. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Um, who, anyone from the Labors team? There's uh, three Oliver Labors on here with us today. Um, just unmute yourself. Hey, James. I'm, I'm Lucas. I work with Ollie. Um, Legend. I think one of my biggest takeaways is sort of just, I guess, breaking it down and actually, I think, goal setting. Like I think for us as a team in general, it can be really easy to get caught up in everything Ollie's doing and not sort of focus on ourselves as well. So taking the time to sort of, you know, take a step back, realize what you want to achieve while also helping him at the same time and setting your own goals is very important. So I think as an associate agent, you also need to keep yourself in mind and understand, okay, this is where our team needs to be, but this is where I also want to be in, in a few years. So how am I going to get there myself? Um, so yeah, it's just breaking it down day by day. Love it. Good man. Fantastic. Thank you for that. Thanks, um, any, anyone else who I haven't got? Beautiful. All right. Fantastic. So as we come into a close, um, just want to say a massive thank you for, for tuning in for today. Uh, you guys are top performers, high performers. And now this is where the work begins. We've created, we've reviewed the process. We've reviewed the last 12 months. We renew the next 12 months of where we need to, to focus. And now we've got the laser focus of the next 90 days. Being not knowing and not doing is like not, not knowing at all. So let's get out there. Let's implement the plan. I'm here to help, support, kick you up your ass if you need me. Please reach out. Any questions? And, uh, and let's get out there and uh, let's have some fun while we're doing it. So thank you for tuning in. Any questions, let me know, but have a wonderful afternoon. Cool, guys. Thank you. Thanks, James. Thanks, Shorty. Thank you.